Morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Kudo Chen, and things like Bartek introduced more detail than me, so I just to skip a lot of detail from me. But right now, I'm working on Expo. I'm really ex excited to work on Expo because it's my I used to love React Native pretty much, and Expo is my first full-time job to dedicate to uh, have development in React Native in daily life. And before that, I used to have some uh, browser stuff in my job, so I kind of familiar with Chromium, the open source project under the uh, Google Chrome browser. So. Let's kind of, I have two side projects. The one is another real native Skia. The real native Skia is using Skia under, uh, for another rendering engine, so we can support um, new platforms such as Linux, or maybe we can use real native on Raspberry Pi devices in the future. The another one is VA. Uh, React Native VA is using the VA JavaScript engine for React Native apps. So we are going to today. I'm very really excited to uh, attend FJS conference. So we are going to talking about the JavaScript engine for apps. Before that, I will probably have a demo. So since we are talking about the JavaScript engine. So what, I have an app to compare different JavaScript engine there. So we have VA and JavaScript Core and Hermes. It's just an uh, uh, interpreter here. So we can have some, for example, expression one, one. For example, one plus one. So they're going to be. There be two. And <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so we can also try to use a different. Oh, the wording is too small to me. Maybe I change another solution to using the video kind of better. So it's one plus one, OK. The another one, I try to using the internal property for the JavaScript engine. This one is the V8 one. So, so you can see the V8 engines version and internal memory footprints. And right hand side, we can test the internal Hermes properties, like the Hermes internal get runtime properties. So we can see the Hermes version and Bico version. And then is the another experiment to test the ZSI internal properties. So supposedly every engine would have these kind of properties, but how? It be there's only VA have this internal property. What's going on? So we are circling back to the interesting question later. So we are going to talk about some stories. Uh, how is React Native VA born? It's uh, tied to back to uh, 2018 when I doing a project to integrate React Native with C++ code. At that time, we tried to use the uh, CXS module, so we can, don't have to wrap another thing between Java, JNI, and C++ and under the hood. But at that time, our project is uh, written in, uh, it's building f uh, by Clan, but React Native is building by GCC. So it's not in, uh, it's incompatible. So I try to propose another uh, some PR to make clan building happens, uh, including the new JavaScript and uh, core engine, which the JSC enjoy, to uh, React Native, and then a problem happens. 
just a special ZIT crash happening on Samsung devices, but uh, I cannot reproduce, developer cannot reproduce, just a lot of crash reporting here, and we cannot do anything. So at that time, I'm thinking try to use VA to React Native, because I think um, JavaScript Core is not let officially support by the uh, on Android and not officially tested by Apple or WebKit, WebKit team. So that's just, uh, the project born at 19, uh, 2019 June. And after one month, Hermes being released. <laughs> I just think if I know Hermes uh, will be released at that next month, I will probably not have this project, but I'm very lucky because these things happen, I can have here to introduce React Native V8. I should show out the, I'm not the first guy to do the V8 engine, Microsoft did. And there's Microsoft uh, React Native fork, they are doing the uh, 58, uh, React Native 58, they, also, they already have this kind of code, but not many people uh, knowing that probably. But I tried to do something different to my VA engine to uh, try to keep it e easy to install. And I also want to learn some from JSI. That's why uh, I'm trying to do it myself. And talking about installation, uh, when you to install the VA engine to React Native, you need to install two packages. One is React Native VA, the another one is VA Android uh, with different variant. And uh, VA Android is kind of just the VA engine, and React Native VA is the JSI uh, runtime implementation. And we also have different kind of VA Android variant with JIT enabled, uh, just in time compilation enabled, or with uh, light more, which uh, don't have the JIT, or supporting WebAssembly with INTO international support, with a kind of different size in the JavaScript engine. I also want to talk about. Uh, actually, VA on iOS is also supported, but I don't think it's not very useful because they don't have JIT enabled, they don't support WebAssembly, so I didn't maintain it so uh, much at the, in the meantime. To in install VA on React Native project, you kind of need a lot of stuff to install package to change your Gradle file, to change your Java file, and Gradle property files. But if you are running an uh, Expo project, you just need a single command, just ex uh, install these three different properties. So I'm echoing to the keynote from uh, Evan and Tomas yesterday. So we are trying to do some fancy stuff to make the library installation easier. So if you are trying to know what's going on under the hood, talk to us. So then talking about features, what features VA offering? Number one, you probably know the remote debugging, but remote debugging has an issue for JSI support, so you cannot use JSI uh, for remote debugging. And people will say you can use the flipper to do it. So VA also support the flipper debugging. You can see that's actually the VA engine, and you can use the VA internal properties under the hood. Another way to inspect the JavaScript runtimes, if you have an Expo project and Expo CLI installed, we have a, spread, uh, a special uh, feature like you can press a single single key and we can open the inspector from your uh, desktop Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge. So you don't necessarily to install Flipper or any other electron fed runtimes. Even more, 
If you want, since it's a Chrome browser, if you want to use an inspector to inspect your inspector, it's also possible. OK, we are going to talk about the answer why the JSI internal property is not available in the demo. OK, it's a funny thing to try to make sure you are in a dream or in a real world, according to the Inception movie. And it's actually the demo is a web assembly. Luckily, the JavaScript core and Hermes could be built from WebAssembly. So in this demo, the JavaScript core or Hermes is not actually a true JavaScript engine. The true JavaScript engine is just a V8. So other two engines are just a fake. Okay. <laughs> but uh, people tend to open issues, uh, feature request issue to Hermes, JavaScript core, to support WebAssembly, and I was always uh, wondering how is it necessary because you can build, re uh, build native code under the hood. Maybe it's not necessary, but maybe it's funny or cross-platform support. You don't have uh, cross-platform tool chains like that, but it's funny. Another slide I'm not pretty sure put anywhere. And somebody would like to use the Hermes because the bytecode is kind of secure to protect your JavaScript bundle. And your JavaScript bundle will not be plain text. But it's not true because bytecode could be decompiled, just like a Java engine. And there's one tool like that to uh, decompile your Hermes bundle to somewhere you can see the in plain text. So I would say bytecode is not true security. Okay. Then we talk about more about comparison for benchmarking because we want to compare different JavaScript engine which you use a profile first. So I have another project called React Native JS Benchmark. That's a inspired by the JavaScript core open source project. And I think the benchmark should be multi-dimensional. So it's not just about memory, CPU, or just TTI time to interactive. Also, I think the JavaScript computing power is also uh, a key to bench for profiling or benchmark. So benchmark number one is a render component throughput. It's actually a score view with a lot of ch children view. And we try to add one child view. And after this child view demounted, we will try to add another child view. So in different intervals, we compare which JavaScript engine will have probably most children view. So the more children view, I think the JavaScript engine will be more powerful in JavaScript computing power. OK, so that's a result. We compare four variants about uh, JavaScript core VA with JIT enable, VA without JIT, and also Hermes. So we uh, take a look which one is the uh, Bad, the best one. I think the uh, the the more the number of super is the best one. Okay, I'm going. So probably is the VA with JIT enabled is probably the best one, and the blue one is the Hermes. So VA with JIT will probably faster two times to three times faster than Hermes. So I think that's uh, good for her, for V8. The another benchmark is uh, talking about memories, slightly different to the benchmark we mentioned previously. There's also a score view, but we stop at a specific kind of children view, and we do the memory footprint at that time. So we stop at uh, uh, 100 children, uh, 1,000 children, and so on. So in this benchmark, uh, OK, not so, <laughs> not so kind of difference there. Okay. Benchmark number three, 
Yeah, we use existing React Native profiling infrastructure to uh, to benchmark the TTI time. So we try to use uh, we try to generate a fact bundle to different size, for example, 3 megabytes bundle, 10 megabytes bundle, and 50 megabytes bundle to differentiate in each this kind of different bundle size and which, which JavaScript engine will have the lower list TTI. So that's a result. OK. And guess which one is the <laughs> lower? I think lower list one is the better. So we can take a look, uh, circling back the result later. So it's not so different between the right hand, the two right hand side. Benchmark number four is uh, APK size. Oh, uh, well, so the VA is uh, two times <laughs> uh, bigger than. Hermes, that's so Google style, that's so solid and large size. Okay, everything comes with a cost. I'm talking about TTI time more for the result. That I do some experiment to try to make uh, VA TTI time to be compete with Hermes. So I did uh, some experiment here. Talking about the VA JavaScript uh, compiler pipeline, and when the day one uh, React Native VA released, people would say, recommend that you can use some uh, technology from VA to speed up the startup time. The one, number one is the uh, bicycle catching, the another one is the uh, snapshot. So we are talking about uh, these two technologies. First one is a snapshot. Snapshot, you can probably easy to see in the Chrome binaries. There's a VA context snapshot.bin file. It's actually the snapshot file. And why is a snapshot file? It's just a memory state. You can serialize from file to memory. And some built-in VA functions are actually uh, Deserialize from uh, the snapshot. For example, JSON parse, and you can on the right hand side you can see there's a lot of built-in JavaScript functions are loading by the snapshot. So if we can use snapshot, they will probably faster than bytecode catching and even interpret from JavaScript expression. So I'm gonna to try snapshot as a uh, to uh, reduce the TTI if possible. So um, we can also try to use the snapshot to uh, custom snapshot. The VA offering a tool, you can create your own snapshot. So in the case, you can uh, use the snapshot to generate some snapshot with a moment where the typically there's a large size in your JavaScript bundle. And in this example, we can reduce 76 uh, percentage times, which is really great. And I try to use the tool to, for React Native bundles, and immediately it just crashed. Okay. <laughs> the reason is that um, just uh, React Native has different stuff flow like the typically the browser. Um, before evaluate the JavaScript bundle, uh, React Native will, will install some internal properties through JSI, and these internal properties are missing from the time you execute from the max snapshot tool. So it just access to undefined properties and exception and crash. So I think snapshot is not available to React Native. So we are going to try another technology, which is the bicycle catching. With bicycle catching, I also have some uh, kind of three different experiments here. The number one is the simplest one. 
uh, by catching to use the API, which is really simple, you just pass the original contents, or if you have a catch content, you just pass to API as well to compile. And here is a result. I try to put the purple ones, the latest one. So uh, the left hand side is the original TTI, and the purple is the one enabled. Uh, Bico catching and the blue ones Hermes. So in this case, I think uh, a little improvement, but us not compatible uh, compatible with Hermes. So I try to hack more to look more about the problem. You can see at that time you pass both original content and catch content to the API, but um, there's a file I.O. here, especially from mobile devices, it's a slow file I.O., so it's not ideal. It's a double loading layer. So I'm trying to think, can we hack to the VA engine like we pass empty original content and just use the catch content here like the AOT tech ahead of time technology, just like a Hermes, uh, Compile to build her bico before your runtime, and we can actually get some get some information from the bico caching, which VA is necessary to know. So here is the flow. We have the left hand side is the build time, right hand side is the runtime. At build time, we use the custom tool called the Mac code catch tool to generate your bytecode catch. And at that time, we also uh, wrap out your JavaScript bundle to be some very small size bundle layer. And at the wrong time, right hand side, you just to use the stop bundle and uh, through uh, the code catch and to interpret the, the JavaScript. So there's a result. The purple one is the, the result of this experiment. So it's kind of compatible to Hermes. And even from the uh, 15 megabytes bundle, it's even faster than Hermes. Oh, well, but there's downside. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the downside is that uh, the bike catching technology is not so uh, platform independent. So you have to support different kind of uh, architecture and uh, uh, Linux, Mac OS, and it's not fully supported from V8. And another downside is that you should, for example, on Android, you should create four different kinds, uh, four different kind of bundle for ARM 64, x86 different uh, bytecode caching layer. So it will increase your X, uh, APK size there. So I'm going to try the experiment number three. Experiment number three is. Um, uh, we have a all in run time. So the left hand side is the second run, uh, is the first time to run your app. So it's typically you have the original bundle and you generate the bytecode catching in run time under the hood. When second time second time to run your app, you just uh, use the bytecode catching and pass the stub bundle to uh, VA engine. Thankfully, React Native also have uh, this kind of uh, technology. You can use the different bundle. So we check when there's a bytecode catching file, we just pass the stub bundle. And that's the result. The purple one is not so good as the pre-built pre catching, but it's, uh, I think it's somehow good enough. But just one downside a little bit. <laughs> I think we can uh, overcome this problem in the future. Because right now we are hacked into the VA engine. So if you have a JavaScript exception and you have a stack trace, and 
because you just uh, pass the stub bundle layer, VA cannot provide correct stack trace for your job to session. Uh, for this question, I think VA support the lazy source position technology, so you can uh, interpret your source position lazily. So I think we can come across this, uh, we can overcome this problem in the future. Okay, so conclusion. So what is going to choose your drawstring engine? I would say in most of case, Hermes is still good compared to the um, APK size and with a good TDI. But if your apps are need highly just JavaScript computing power, uh, for example, you have a much more reanimated work laid under the hood animation, or if you need some fancy feature from WebAssembly, because I think V8 is right now the first engine to support WebAssembly, I would recommend you use the V8, especially for JIT enabled. I don't think the light mode is not so compatible to JIT. And who use V8 under the hood? I would say some popular, famous crypto like in, uh, apps using Reality V8. And I will probably not publicly, yes. But it's interesting when you can try to unzip the APK under the hood. I used to do that to find oh, who to actually use V8 uh, in production. So I think that's pretty much my journey to make, uh, make VA to fast and performant and to you can use it in a production environment. That's all my talk from today. Thanks, everyone.